Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here and welcome back to the railway. Now recently I've kind of bombarded you with quite a lot of reviews and running days so I thought today I'd just take a little bit of a chill pill and just show you uh, what I've been up to in some of my spare time. Uh, I've got some, well I've got all sorts to show you let's be honest. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of an update video so um, hopefully it'll just be a, an interesting chat. Um, but first I thought I'd show you some of the modifications that I've been doing to various locomotives. And here's the first mod that I've done, and it doesn't look particularly modified from the outside. Um, but uh, just after Christmas, um, a chap called Berry120, I think it was. Let me check. Yeah, Berry120, uh, he sent me uh, a few messages talking about uh, people who have modified the Ringfield motor to run on a CD motor. And uh, I'll take you off, said Sam to the body. <laughs> no, I'll take the body off and uh, show you um, what he was on about. There we go. Now this one's got the lighting system inside it. Uh, but there you go, as you can see, that's one of those CD motors. Uh, now, when he first told me about this, I was very pessimistic because, first of all, these CD motors um, from a CD drive um, are uh, only rated for 6 volts. So I said to him, you know, if you put 12 volts through it, it's probably going to get hot, boil over and break. Um, you, you know, you won't be able to run it on 12 volts. You know, either that or you'll have to like put a resistor, you know, mess about with resistors and stuff and try and cut the voltage down, but then you're not going to have enough power to pull any coaches. Uh, so I just thought, you know, it's a terrible idea. Um, but then I got to thinking, uh, this Ringfield motor that was in this locomotive was basically knackered. Um, it was really slow, it ran hot, uh, basically I needed to replace it. So I thought, what have I got to lose? It's going to cost me 20 quid if I ruin it. Uh, so I thought I'd try it. So I cracked open an old IDE drive. Um, the SATA ones are still at current, but the IDE ones are pretty obsolete now. Um, so I took the motor out, and it's not the motor that drives the disc, it's actually the motor that drives the disc tray, you know, the tray that comes in and out. Uh, so I took it out and fitted it in here, and uh, as you can see, uh, it basically fits in very nicely. I did have to glue the, uh, the well, the cog. Uh, the brass cog onto the shaft because the shaft was a bit too small uh, but otherwise it's just glued in there and uh, it does actually work amazingly well like seriously seriously well um, against all odds and I've tested it for hours on end and it really doesn't overheat it really doesn't have any problem at all and uh, I'll show you that running I'm just gonna pop a little power to it um, of course being uh, 6 volts it does come on at quite low power as you can see that's a good crawl as you can see there. Marvellous crawl really. Uh, but it does go at some crazy speeds as well. Uh, but you can leave it at those speeds and it doesn't derail itself and the motor doesn't get hot. I would say this has probably done about four hours of running uh, in its lifetime so far um, with this new motor that is and it absolutely does work fantastic. So I'm just going to drive it past now at full speed. There you go. <laughs> it's really very very fast. Uh, but really very successful, so it is a very, very good way to modify the Ringfield motor. Uh, and it does work fantastically against the odds. Uh, so, you know, the Ringfield motors aren't very good, uh, but this does make them better. So that's always an option if you want, and they're certainly not very expensive. So I'll pop this on, and I'll show you uh, the next modification I've done on a locomotive. Right, I was very pleased about this one. Uh, these are the old Triang Princess locomotives and I've accumulated loads of these, that's two of them, uh, and they're motorless because I, I use the motors um, in other things, you know, I keep them as spares. I've got about two more of these probably in the back, uh, but the problem is they're all fitted with these old trying wheels, and you can tell they're trying wheels because they haven't got gaps in between the, you know, in between the spindles, let's say. Um, so, what I wanted to do was fit uh, one of these bodies, one of these, well, this, one of these trying bodies, for example, onto a later chassis, which is this chassis. Uh, but there's a couple of reasons why you can't do that. Now, first, the triang body um, is normally screwed on through the chimney, but these newer ones are screwed on at the front. As you can see just there, there's a screw. Um, so, first thing I had to do was drill a hole at the front there. Now you wouldn't have to do any of this if you can find one of the later bodies that's in good condition, but at the time I didn't have one. Uh, this one is actually one of the later bodies now, I did find one, but I'm just showing you what I did. Um, so that's what I did, I drilled a hole in, uh, in the front there, uh, which made the body fit on. Now the second problem with doing that is, as you can see on here, um, it's this little thing here, I'm not sure what it's called. 
Uh, but as you can see, nothing sticks up there. But on this modern one, um, it does. Something protrudes upwards there. And if we take a look at, let's see here. So what it means is, on this is the Hornby body. On the Hornby body, you've got two little cutaways there and there, where they can fit in. But on the Triang body, by comparison, you don't have those. So what I did with this, I couldn't think of a way to get them, you know, to... Uh, file these down really so I took to a sol I took a soldering line to it which was a terrible idea uh, but it did actually fit on which was perfect and uh, that was fine and obviously from the top you can't really see the evidence of it um, but like I say I found a body that I was happy with now so I've added that um, so it's not really a problem anymore and of course she works absolutely brilliantly on modern track um, because the chassis that has the gaps in the wheels as you can see and go the gaps in the wheels there, uh, it actually goes on the track a lot better and the flanges, which aren't as big, uh, don't drag on the sleepers anymore. So, as you can see, much better running. Slow it down. There you go. So that's cool. So I was really pleased with that. Alright, now the third mod concerns these locomotives, which are the Fowler 4P, and this is actually one of the old bodies. Um, from the 1980s or 70s, or uh, probably 80s, maybe even 90s. Um, and uh, basically, I, you might know that I had a modern Hornby one, uh, which looks like this, um, but it gave up the ghost. Um, I, you might have known already that it had some damage to it, um, but it gave up the ghost, and I thought, you know, I really don't want to buy another modern Hornby one because they just don't seem as good as the old ones that have the XO3 motor in them and whatnot. So I bought one. Uh, one of these older ones with the XO3 motor in it and uh, it was fine but as you can see there's a few bits of damage on the front of the boiler there and generally it's a good body there's bits of glue splattered on there generally it's a good body uh, but it's really not got the detail that this one had but amazingly this chassis which is the old chassis uh, with the XO th I think it's an XO3 motor in it actually does it fits on to this modern body and as you can see they're pretty much identical except the modern one has got a lot better detail on it uh, but there were, uh, where were they? There was a couple of like extra bits of detail which were on here um, and the old chassis wouldn't fit on it while they were still there so I had to cut those off. But apart from that, um, that fits on perfectly as you can see and uh, that runs very nicely. So what I've managed to do is I've got the same detail, uh, just an older chassis with the XO3 motor which I think is better. I mean it's noisier, don't get me wrong, but more reliable. And as for the modern chassis, which I've disposed of, let's just say it is no more. I, uh, I've salvaged the motor and uh, various gears and things, but I couldn't do anything with the chassis and it was damaged anyway, so it, uh, it got disposed of quite brutally. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, you know, it made me feel better anyway. It caused me no end of trouble. And, uh, yep, this one is the final mod I did. <laughs> now, you'll notice he's not been in the last few videos, and we call it the Bullman, quite, I don't know appropriately, um, because there was quite an unfortunate disaster which involved one of my feet crushing down onto him. As you can see, he's absolutely fine, but his wagon wasn't, so I had to uh, replace it, and uh, as you can see, he looks just as good as new, so hopefully in uh, one of the future videos, you'll see him in it. If I can get him on the tracks now, you'll see that he's now good and working again, <laughs> good as new. So I thought I'd just let you know in case anybody was concerned about him. Okay, let's move on. Another update for you, I've upgraded um, all the lighting. Actually, this happened a long time ago over Christmas. So you might notice that uh, since Christmas, uh, the videos have been looking a little bit better lit. And that's because I distribute these all around the room while I'm filming. And they just really, really help to uh, brighten up the dark corners. And they really are fantastic. I can't say enough about how great they are. Uh, but a few of you did notice um, that if we move the camera down, um, there's no track going across the centre of the room anymore, uh, which is a shame, um, and I did used to like it. In fact, you can see um, where it's just been cut off as it comes out of that tunnel there, <laughs> which is a shame, I know. Um, but basically the reason uh, for that is I'm moving these lights around all the time. Uh, you know, they've got cables dragging, dragging across the floor, and stuff like that and it was just in the way and you know sometimes I just like to grab one of the lights and stick it here or stick it over here you know oops, uh, to look at part of the layout or something like that and uh, having a track down here on the floor is really not ideal and uh, 
I didn't want to break it to be honest so um, just for the time being until I think of a better way to deal with the lights and whatnot um, I thought I'd get rid of it but still yep softbox lights really really useful and they're fantastic really just for lighting the place uh, now in one of Western Centurion's videos uh, just after Christmas and I'm sorry I can't remember what it was called now um, but he was showing um, a notice board um, that he had in his railway room or his uh, railway room to be uh, and on that notice board were various uh, photographs um, for, uh, you know, inspirations, really, um, so that he knew what he was going for when he uh, built his uh, layout. Uh, now, I did the same thing not too long ago. Uh, well, it was. It was like last summer, something like that. Now, mine weren't as much for inspiration. Mine were more to decorate the room a little bit. Uh, but still, I thought I'd show you those uh, just uh, and just show you what I've got up around the room, uh, just in case anybody was wondering. Uh, so here we go. So first I thought I'd show you the back wall, and this has got um, sort of various things on it. Um, first of all, you've got the Certificate of Authenticity um, for the ambulance train set. Um, underneath there, you've got the Coronation Scott Certificate. And in the middle here, um, this is, what do we call it, the double O gauge model railways and accessories 2011. Uh, this is the Hornby one, this is the first one I got. The plan originally was to get one every year and fill the walls, but I just didn't buy train sets, um, which these come with, so unfortunately I didn't get those. Um, so I've just got the one at the moment, but I will try and get some more. Over there we've got the Sheffield Pullman Certificate of Authentication. I, I think I said that wrong, but still. Um, and the White Pullman Certificate too. And here we've got one of Backman's calendars. Um, let's have a closer look at that. There you go. That was that's the August 2013 picture. And there's all sorts of as you'd guess, as is the norm with a calendar. Um, but they were giving these away for free at Butterley um, in 2013. Well, no, I think it was 2014 actually, and it was an out of date calendar. But still, a very nice idea. And up above my shelf of locos is also Dumbleton Hall, which is at the SDR, the South Devon Railway. And you'll see a lot of pictures around the room that are actually from there. Um, because that's where I took a lot of these pictures. And that was also at the SDR. It looks like a southern wheel of some sort, doesn't it? Uh, like one of Bullard's wheels or something. I'm not too sure though, because they're sort of blue. Uh, but you can see the size of it compared with the... Well, that's my dad um, there. Um, but yeah, that's quite a nice picture. Um, a bit different, isn't it? And uh, yep, just shows the size of locomotive wheels really, doesn't it? And that's another one, uh, which is just above this box which is there on the railway, you'll have seen it before I'm sure and uh, I was quite pleased with this picture back in the day um, this was also at the SDR and you can see Dumbleton Hall just there I think that's it isn't it um, but uh, yeah I think that was from up on the bridge at, uh, at the SDR um, but still quite an interesting picture and it uh, looks pretty good here on the wall I think yeah so next one then and that picture there was actually on the same footbridge but that's what you see if you face the other way so still the SDR and up across here, we've got one of my favourite locos, or it was one of my favourites at the time. Hang on, where can we get it? Where there's no... There you go. As you can see, that's the City Class. Fantastic Backman locomotive there. And that was one of the photos I took of it for some reason. I think it was for the video thumbnail, actually, but I don't think I used it. So that's where it is. All right, now don't shout at me if I'm wrong, because I don't have one of these in my collection. And everybody does, except me, probably. Uh, now, is that a Class 08 shunter? I don't know. I don't know anything about diesels, but it looks like one, doesn't it? Well, it's an 060 diesel, and that was somewhere. I can't remember where. I don't think it was at the SDR, but it could have been. No, I think it was, actually. <laughs> there was one uh, somewhere. I think it was Dartmouth or something like that. There was one, but no. I think that was at the SDR. So, yeah, that's all my pictures, anyway. And now to talk about one of the most serious problems on my railway, at least, and that's boxes. Everywhere you look, somewhere you'll see a box for a locomotive or a coach or something like that. They're absolutely everywhere. And uh, I don't like to throw them away. I'm a bit of a hoarder. And they're such lovely boxes that Hornby and Backman and Triang made. Uh, but I didn't want to get rid of them. So I've actually had to expand into this chest, which we're back at again. And in there, again, is just full of empty boxes. Completely full. I'll show you. Oh, this is a closer look. Now... I can't believe I've got this many to be honest because only about 60% of my locos have boxes um, but still there's hundreds of them I'm just trying to cram myself in here thank god and I was going to make a boxes video at one point but I thought you're all going to kill yourselves if I it sounds boring basically so but look just boxes everywhere and 
you've got sharp eyes you might see some here that haven't been reviewed yet there's the J50 box and you know this has probably got about a third of all my boxes in it just this cabinet sorry well it's yeah like a chest isn't it but you know as you can see I've filled it up immediately so I've still got to think of somewhere else to put these boxes um, when I get more but uh, for the moment they're about under control and another problem I've got is tenders and I like to call this tender tower and I'll show you why uh, now it wasn't too long ago was it um, that I showed you this top drawer um, which actually has got a space because I've got something else on the layout uh, so that one's full of tenders that one is full of tenders and now this one is full of tenders and uh, soon that one's going to be full of tenders but I don't know what I'm going to do with that rolling stock yet <laughs> but still uh, yeah, running out of room for tenders, and while we're at it, uh, locomotive storage is becoming a problem as well, I'll show you that. Now I've got my hand over here because I'm not showing you one of those locos there, because I'm saving it for like a special review, so sorry about that. That's the triang shelf, you can see over my hand there, that's the triang shelf, that's full. That's the sort of, uh, not old but not new locomotive shelf, and the hall classes have been promoted to it. And because technically they are Hornby, they're not trying, so they've been moved up there. And that's my uh, modern locomotive shelf, and it's absolutely bursting to capacity, um, but ridiculous. And I've got to cover something else up here as well. That's going to be the tank engines, but again, it's not just tank engines now. It's got the transcontinental stuff on it, and it's got some tender locos now as well. Uh, so really, I need some help here. I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, but I've got to find somewhere else to store locomotives, and soon. Um, because I'm slowly but surely running out of space <laughs> but it's a nice problem to have it's not it's not a dire problem <laughs> and before I forget I bought a new HM2000 as well um, as you can see there the old one's looking a little bit battered and it wasn't too good I don't know whether um, you know the brush contact on these I don't know is it is it going to be like a potentiometer in there or is it actually going to be like a little variac I don't know but for some reason um, you turn it up to full speed, well half speed sorry, you turn it up to half speed, the loco goes faster, you go from there to about 3 o'clock, it goes slower, and you go from 3 o'clock to full speed, and it goes faster again. Uh, and I just didn't remember it doing this to start with, so I bought a new one to see if this does the same. Uh, now it does a little bit, but it's nowhere near as bad. You know, it's a nice smooth speed up to there, then it gets a little slower there, and then it's faster again there, so I'm much happier with that. Uh, but quite interestingly, the output of this is only 550 milliamps a piece. Yep, and the output of this one was 800. It says 800 milliamps a piece on there, so um, again, Hornby cutting back. <laughs> This is a bit newer, I think the date on that one was 2006, and the date on this one was 2003, there you go, 03, uh, so slightly older but a little bit more powerful, but, but I still think it's the same thing because I tested the current output, uh, which you shouldn't do, I shorted them out for a very short period through an ammeter, and uh, just to see what sort of output they had, and they both did about 5 amps. Now, of course, you can't run them either of them at 5 amps for any more than about 3 seconds and not do any damage. Um, but, you know, for them both to have the same output, I reckon it probably is just the same, <laughs> the same stuff in there. Uh, but just to cover themselves, they've rated it lower on here. Because, actually, um, when this one was pulling about an amp, so that's only 200 milliamps over what it should have been doing, uh, this one popped and I had to, you know, I had to repair it. Um, so, you know... This one, I reckon they've covered themselves, so they've rated it 500 milliamps. You can pull maybe 700, 800 milliamps, no problem, and you're still not going to pop it. Um, which is about, you know, two locomotives, maybe three, <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm still going to do the same things I used to with it. Uh, I don't mind repairing it if I have to, uh, but it seems pretty much the same, um, but still. So that's all I can think of, I'm sure there was more, um, but I'll come back to you with it if I remember. But I thought that might just be interesting to talk to you about some of the stuff I've been doing, and some of the problems I've had and how I've overcome them, or <laughs> some of the problems that I've got and I don't know how to overcome them, but still. 
Uh, it's all good fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little update. Um, just a bit of something different, really. Back with a review next time, I think, uh, which should be a lot of fun. But for now, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you like the video, please give it a like or a subscribe. Or if you really liked it, you can check out the Facebook page or the Twitter page at facebook.com forward slash samstrains and twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be great to see you on there, but for now, guys, thank you very much for watching, and girls, of course, and uh, I'll see you real soon. Cheers, everybody.